Now let's describe the arteries that irrigate the upper limbs. Now, we just described the two uh, common carotid arteries and their branches that irrigate the neck and head. Now remember, now we're following the subclavian arteries on the right side and on the left side. Remember that on the right side, the subclavian artery is a branch of the brachiocephalic trunk and the left subclavian artery is uh, it branches off directly from the aortic arch is the third branch now let's follow this and I'm gonna put some color in here let's see let's fall let's yes let's follow the subclavian artery we get the same red okay look at hmm. wait okay look at the subclavian artery branching off brachiocephalic trunk on the right side directly from the aorta on the left side uh, in this part let me draw so we can be oriented about here we have both our clavicles right like about here we have the sternum and the ribs right okay so this section in red that's only the subclavian uh, artery now the subclavian artery as i told you before it will supply the upper limb but as it moves the same blood vessels are not different arteries it's the same blood vessel as it moves through the different regions in the body uh, is going to receive a different name but it's the same blood vessel and then of course it's going to branch off so uh, here is the subclavian artery here it locates under the clavicle and when it passes the lateral border of the first rib it becomes another artery but again I want you to remember remind you I'm sorry this is the same artery so right about here these will be your axillary artery okay now axillary artery gives branches and blah 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 but the thing is that so so at uh, when it crosses the inferior border of the terrace major it becomes the brachial artery see same artery different colors so this brachial artery runs through the do you remember the bicipital groove uh, that groove in um, the let's see the medial border of your biceps brachii so it runs just deep to that if you push okay laterally your basic uh, your biceps brachii you can actually palpate the poles of the brachial artery this is the 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 artery that we mm, um, obstruct uh, whenever we are measuring the blood pressure. Now, on the antecubital area, antecubital region at the level of the cubital fossa, all of this is surface anatomy. On the medial side of the cubital fossa, just place two fingers in there and you will feel the brachial artery as it crosses right anterior to the elbow joint, immediately to the tendon of the biceps brachii. So, so right in there, okay, the um, brachial artery branches, let's put magenta, into one lateral branch and a medial branch how do you think are they called the radial uh, artery on the lateral side and the ulnar artery in the medial side now these two arteries they form two arches two palmar arches one is superficial one is deep that's the only thing i want you to uh, to go and from there we're going to see some digit uh, or digital arteries that are going to supply 
the fingers of your hand. And that's it, pretty, pretty easy, right? It receives almost the same names as all the bones and nerves and, and structures that we have been covering so far in the course. Okay, now, Ooh. oh, I have to close this, okay. Let's see. Okay, in here we can see, I don't know if it's prettier, I think mine was prettier. We can see, let's follow this blood vessel now in here. Okay, subclavian artery. Again, same thing is happening on the left side. The only difference is that the subclavian artery in here branches off directly from the aortic arch. But in the right side, we will go from left ventricle, a ascending aorta, aortic arch, brachiocephalic trunk. Let's say that we want to go to the pinky. Um, brachiocephalic trunk, subclavian artery. See how it is located right here under the clavicle. Here, when it passes the lateral border of the first rib, it becomes the axillary artery. Axillary artery, when it passes right under the inferior border of the um, teres major, it becomes the brachial artery. In blue is where the blue dots mark the place where you can feel that we just described. Uh, you can feel the pulse of this artery on the bicipital groove and right here in the anterior to the elbow joint. Right here, the brachial artery gives off two branches, the radial and the ulnar artery. And these two, we, we say that they anastomose, this anastomosis, uh, they meet together, okay, to form these arches, the deep and the superficial palmar arch. And from there, we have all of those digital arteries and we just got here to the pinky. There's two places where we can easily mm, uh, feel the pulse of the radial artery as uh, it becomes superficial, one, is on the anterior and uh, lateral aspect of your wrist right here okay you can place two or three fingers in there um, and you will feel it and another place where you can well it's not actually the radial artery but it's a branch of the radial artery in your snuff box the anatomical snuff box so right there you can feel the radial uh, pulse now what else that's it with the upper limb, no more than that. I just want you, okay, to, because next we're going to describe the irrigation of the lower limbs. But I don't want to just skip this and, whoa, what happened to the rest of the body? Just please understand that we have, I will say, I don't know how many uh, millions of blood vessels, uh, supplying every single organ and tissue in the body. If you get to put all of your blood vessels lined up one after the other, you can wrap the entire planet two and a half times. So imagine how many blood vessels we have. We're just covering the, the major blood vessels. So we mentioned the two um, branches of the ascending aorta, right and left coronary artery, the three branches of the aortic arch. The thoracic aorta gives off uh, some branches for the thoracic organs and the thoracic wall. Uh, then the descending aorta, remember when it passes through the diaphragm muscle, it becomes the abdominal aorta. And the abdominal aorta gives numerous branches to every single organ in our little beautiful belly. Uh, for the liver, the gallbladder, the stomach, the pancreas back there, the spleen, duodenum, uh, all of these is colon, they removed the uh, small intestine. The thing is that we have branches for everyone. Remember, the two terminal branches of the abdominal aorta are the two common iliac arteries, right and left common iliac arteries. So here's where we're going to start the next video to describe the irrigation of the lower limbs. See ya!